so you wanted to buy one of these, but all they seem to have in stock is one of these. Hey, this is John the Net Guy, and today's show is really special. We're going to be turning lemons into lemonade. Maybe you're still in the EVGA queue waiting for your turn to buy a GPU, or maybe you've given up hope altogether. I got together with four of my tech creator friends and we were talking about all those things you can still upgrade today other than your GPU. I invited them on my channel to do a collaboration and to tell you about their top picks in upgrading beyond your GPU. Take it away, Iggy. Hey, thanks, John. Welcome to This Bites For You. At This Bites For You, we give you advice on everything from installing a single piece of memory all the way up to building a complete PC, and in between that, plenty of technical advice. Any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead, leave them down below. I respond to everyone. Now with that, one of the biggest updates, aside from the GPU, the video card, to me is storage. So we've come a long way in the PC with storage coming from IDE, good old IDE. Now mind you, this is a 3.5 that was much larger, but this is what I could fit in my house. Back in the day of, what was it? Up to 133 megabytes per second. Then we evolved, we came to SATA. SATA allowed us speeds up to 200 megabytes per second on a mechanical drive. So then from a mechanical drive, we went to an SSD, which will give us speeds of up to 600 megabytes per second. We're blazing at this point. Coming from the mechanical drive and even the SATA drive, taking minutes sometimes to get into a stable state of Windows, now into seconds, literally seconds. And then we've evolved from even there now to M.2 SSDs, up to 7,000 megabytes per second, at least so far. That is incredibly impressive. Now, we have not only speed, speed is amazing. Press the power button on your computer, you sit down, by the time you're comfortable, you're in Windows to where you could turn on the computer, go cook some dinner, come back, and you might be in Windows. But now, turn on the computer, sit down, you're in Windows, start typing, doing some work, playing some games, editing some videos like this. Everything's quick. Aside from quick, capacity. This drive, a 200 gigabyte drive, Back in the day, this was tremendous. Now, this little teeny tiny thing is one terabyte. Five of these right in here. That's impressive. But anyway, enough with me and the storage. I hope I have helped you on that. But now, let's go over to my friend Mokul and see what he's got in store for us. Over to you, Mokul. Well, thanks Iggy and hey everyone, this is Mukul and like everyone else here, I also run a tech channel which mostly focuses on product reviews consisting of both PC components and other consumer and tech products like laptops, smartphones, headphones, etc. So yeah, basically everything slash most of the things. So the one crucial peripheral you could buy or upgrade whilst waiting for a GPU can be one of uh, these high refresh rate IPS gaming monitors which have gotten quite affordable now and sometimes you can even uh, find great deals on them. I mean you could just, just wait and get the GPU and maybe buy, buy a monitor alongside with it. But it's kind of wise if you see a good deal on them uh, before you buy your GPU then you should snatch that deal and get that monitor to your home. This will definitely be a huge bump or upgrade if you're still using a 60Hz or even a 75Hz monitor right now. I mean most of the 144Hz and even faster IPS monitors now are performing great in terms of lesser and lesser uh, ghosting issues on the panels. And their sRGB, ARGB and DCI-P3 color gamut coverage has improved many folds too. Well, this means that with this new monitor, not only can you have an awesome time playing a lot of competitive FPS games, but if you are into graphic designing or if you really value colors on your display for general media consumption and whatnot, then this upgrade feels really crucial. And if you are one of those ultra competitive gamers who have eyes of an eagle on their face, uh, then checking out uh, the 240 or even 360Hz monitors might make more sense. That is if you're okay with the 1080p panel and extreme color accuracy for those graphic intensive works don't matter to you much in the end. 
But if you are someone who is not into competitive gaming at all, well, then also many of the recent gaming titles can run up to 90 or even 100 FPS easily at 1080p. And many of these titles can even cross uh, 80 or 90 FPS at 1440p resolution too. So if you're planning to get a mid-tier graphic card or even a beefier card, especially when they are available at their MSRP or at least close to their MSRP, well, I mean, it's not a bad idea to have the monitor ready for that yummy graphic card, which you might get later. So here's hoping this made any sort of sense to you. And now over to you, Joe. For those who don't know me, my name is Joe. I'm with Pinky Tech and I do gaming PC builds as well as hardware reviews over on my YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out. Now, the first thing I'm checking to make sure my GPU is not bottlenecked is my CPU. This is a Ryzen 5 2600. And quite frankly, for the new 3080s or the 6800 XTs, this guy's just not gonna cut it. Now I was able to overclock that 2600X to uh, 4.1 gigahertz on all cores, and it's been a great processor for me, but it's currently struggling in content creation. And so I'm gonna go to this guy. This is the Intel 10850K. Now this is gonna give me two more cores, four more threads, and a boatload more processing power to make sure it can keep up with those new graphics cards. Now that also means a platform update, a new motherboard inbound as well, but you do what you gotta do. So make sure your CPUs can keep up with your GPUs, everyone. And if you have questions about compatibility or which card you should pair with which processor, jump on over to the Pinky Tech Discord server. We'll be happy to give you some advice. And with that, it's over to Danny at PC Tech Hustle. Hey Joe, thanks for the intro there. By the way, guys, my name is Dan with PC Tech Hustle and my channel focuses primarily on PC building at its core root, but also on a very budget sense. And since I do so much PC building, obviously I touch on a lot of power supplies. So one thing to definitely get ready before you even buy that video card is to make sure that you got a power supply that is not only of proper wattage and of proper quality, but also a known reliable brand. And the reason you want to go with a top tier quality power supply is well, one, you don't have to worry about anything. And two, it's going to offer you all the protections and assurances that the power is going to be delivered cleanly and won't destroy your components down the road. So if you're looking to make an upgrade to get you ready for that new video card, then you might be thinking, well, power supply is a power supply is a power supply, right? Well, not quite at all. And let me tell you why. So on that note, let me sum things up and give you guys one solid piece of advice if you're questioning what you should buy when it comes in terms of power supplies, because there's a lot of confusion out there in terms of what is really good and not. Head on over to LTT's power supply tier list, which basically has all the known power supplies and breaks them down in terms of their quality, reliability, what to expect, what to not expect, and gives you a good buying guide. So if you guys are going for an upper tier graphics card, then I definitely say choose from the tier A list, tier B list at minimum. But basically if you choose from one of those lists, you're more than solid and you don't have anything to worry about. On that note, I do have a few power supplies sitting out in front of me. These are ones that I've used in the past and I can definitely recommend, but honestly, personally, my favorite brand hands down is going to be the EVGA units. They've been making power supplies for God knows, I don't even know how long at this point, but they're known to have some of the best power supplies out on the market and specifically the G3 series, which I have here, which I've been using in my system now for about four years solid, no problems whatsoever. And it's on the tier A list. So if you want to just take it from its core value right there, then go get you an EVGA unit. So one last piece of advice I can give you guys, if you've found the brand name that you want to go with in terms of power, but you don't know how much wattage, Run on over to PCPartPicker.com and check out their power budget calculator. It'll give you a calculator that'll kind of give you an idea of about how much power the system would consume on average. At about 30 to 40%, I'd say you'd be just fine. So guys, hopefully that was some quick useful tips in terms of power supplies, what to be looking out for, what to stay away from, how to calculate your power budget, etc., etc. But my buddy John over at the Net Guy has got some ideas in terms of case upgrades he'd like to share with you. John, take it away. Thanks, Dan. My vote for something you should consider in upgrading while you wait for your GPU is... Well, you guessed it, your case. It's the first thing people see when they look at your new system. And while you're waiting to show off that new GPU, let's make sure you're putting it in a system that you can be proud of. Maybe you're still rocking that 2018 tower. Maybe the dust bunnies are so thick they've started their own colony. Either way, this is a great opportunity to do some spring cleaning and upgrade the look of your PC at the same time. Great RGB cases can be found like these for under $100, and many will include addressable RGB fans and even their own controllers. If you decide to upgrade your cooling, newer models have better air filtration and room for 240mm and even 360mm AIO radiators. If RGB isn't your thing, tempered glass is still the rage and will give your GPU, AIO, or heat pipe cooler a chance to show off. 
a new case represents a new opportunity to update the look of your machine from mild to wild and anywhere in between. You can finally get that cable management just right, clean up your components, update your cooling, and it's a really easy one day upgrade for just about anyone. Well, as you can see, there is hope in sight. Whether you decide to upgrade your storage to a faster SSD, your monitor to a gaming monitor with a higher refresh rate, your CPU and RAM so that you're not bottlenecked when your GPU does arrive, or your power supply to feed that hungry beast, or the case you're gonna put it all in, there are plenty of great options and upgrades waiting for you as a PC gaming enthusiast. I hope you enjoyed this collaboration video as much as I did. I encourage you to check out these other channels and creators. We've been working hard to make great content for you and are looking forward to a day when we can all buy GPUs for retail again. This has been John, the Net Guy. Thanks for watching and thanks to my friends for making this video possible.